Hi everybody, I'm Ralph Shaheen alongside of Kenny Schrader and Dan Pardis, two drivers who have both taken the green flag here in this very event, their traditional season opener for the Yarka Remax Series. Kenny, let's start with you. The Yarka Remax Series now has a bunch of new young talent running basically NASCAR Nextel Cup R&D programs and some seasoned veterans. Who has the upper advantage here at Daytona? Well, there's nothing like the, trying to overcome that experience. Having that experience is a tremendous advantage here. But when, you, uh, when you're one of those kids that's shown a lot of talent and you're in an R&D car for a good top-notch Nextel Cup team, that's a, that's a huge advantage, too, if your enthusiasm doesn't get the best of you. What's neat about this series is there's still guys that run a half a dozen races a year with their buddies running the car out of their shop at the house, and you can come run this race. So that's what makes this uh, series so appealing. Dan, he mentioned enthusiasm. Obviously, we're here at Daytona. So much excitement. Are these guys more nervous and excited about the fact it's Daytona or just a season opener? This is a Super Bowl of racing, as Kenny could tell you. Every race car dream, drive driver dreams to come to Daytona and race at Daytona. When you come to here, you're fired up, a lot of energy. You just want to get in that thing and strap into that race car and run 180 miles around these high banks here at Daytona. But you have to be patiently aggressive. And that's what we're going to see here today. Hopefully, these drivers can use their head. A lot of good drivers with a lot of good race cars, like Kenny says. So Hopefully they can all be patient and string out and be there at the end. Arguably the best veteran in the field is the six-time champion, Frank Kimmel. He's won the last five titles in a row, but believe it or not, he's never won at Daytona. A six-time ARCA Remax Series champion with over 8,000 laps led, Frank Kimmel has shown time and again he's got the savvy to take his car to the front at every track on the schedule. But while he's amassed 56 career victories, there's still one prize he's yet to claim. To make it even tougher for Frank Kimmel today, he's going to start from the absolute tail end of this field. As you see, it's been a struggle for him here at Daytona. And for more on this story, here's Bob Dillner. We like to call him King Kimmel, but today, friends, to come from dead last in this field to challenge to win the race. Here's what happened. This car was late for tech yesterday, so Arca didn't so. He had to take a champion's provisional. So, Frank, the question to you is how difficult will this be, and how will you attack this race? Well, I'll tell you what, I don't think, uh, you have to usually attack Daytona Speedway. I think today I'm going to have to avoid all the stuff that's going to go on. Uh, we haven't started this far back at Daytona in a long time, I don't think ever. Uh, but the Advanced Auto Parts Support Taurus has been really good all day in practice. We were fastest in happy hour, fourth or fifth fastest car in practice uh, for qualifying. So hopefully we just take our time, get near the front, and race with those young kids up there. Frank Kimmel will be one to watch today in this Advanced Auto Parts car. Lindsay? Bobby Gerhardt is no stranger to this situation. Here he is accepting his third pork pole award in a row here at Daytona. Yes, he doesn't quite know how many fingers to hold up. Bobby has won twice here at Daytona, never though from the pole. So Bobby, I want to know what gives you the confidence that you can do it this time starting up front? Well, Lindsay, we do know this. You're in a much, much uh, happier spot if you, if uh, track position wise, if you start up front. So. Uh, you know, we weren't going to make any these cars fast to put ourselves in these positions, and uh, hopefully we can put the rest of the stuff together to go to victory lane. He did it in 99. He did it in 2002. If he's going to do it in 2005, he's going to have to hold off the young guns, one of which is with Don Radebaugh. In only five series starts, Blake Feast has already won twice at Nashville and Talladega. Now from outside front row at Daytona, he's ready to go again, shooting for three out of six. You got the stuff to get the job done, Blake? Yeah, we got the stuff. Uh... Last year I was watching this Ditech.com car with Kyle in it from home, so uh, just glad to be here. Hopefully we'll have the same result today. All right, remember Kyle Busch won in this car at Daytona last year. Blake Feast won in this machine at Talladega. In each of those situations, the car started from outside front row, as it will again here today. Ralph. All right, Don, thanks. You know, it's going to be an interesting thing, but Kenny, we got Frank Kimmel all the way at the back. Would you be too worried about it back there? Uh, you just got to be on your toes in case something happens. But you can start in the middle. You can. I've seen these accidents start in the front row, in the middle, and in the back. Frank knows one thing, that he doesn't have this race. to have to win this race to go to Toledo and be, get the championship awards. Let's crank up the engines. Let's head back downstairs. Drivers, start your engines. Engines are coming to life, those big throaty V8s, all ready to go racing for 200 miles here at the famed Daytona International Speedway. 
the racing season for the ARCA Remax Series is about to get underway. Stay with us. Speed Channel's coverage of the ARCA Remax Series is brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. For the best parts, people, and price, we're ready in advance. And by Remax, outstanding agents, outstanding results. Well, there's a good sight. Race cars forming up here on the high banks of Daytona, getting ready to kick off the 2005 ARCA Remax Series. Let's introduce you to the drivers that will be competing in today's 42nd annual edition here at Daytona, the ARCA Remax Series. On the pole, Bobby Gerhardt alongside of another Chevy, Blake Bees in the number 94. Second row, we had Todd Cleaver and Kyle Krisloff, two of those drivers that we were talking about, the Nextel Cup teams uh, putting a lot of stock in. Third row, we see Joey Miller with Matt Hagen's racing, 20-year-old young gun, ready to rock and roll this season, going to run the full season along next to him. Look at that, longtime veteran Tim Steele. I talked to Tim before the race. He said, I'm going to win this race here today, so we need to keep an eye on him. Mike Garrett, he's got a new crew chief and a new team, and it's paying off. He's starting on the inside of row four. Keith Mert in the number 19 Chevy, right alongside him with a solid 49.4 effort. Rounding out the top ten, we have a uh, Coach Gibbs car with J.J. Yaley in it and Walt Brannon uh, starting 10th in his Dodge. There we look starting next day behind him, Billy the Venturini with his dad. Been around this series an awful long time, long time veteran. New crew chief, crew chief on that car, uh, Troy Silberg. He said, man, we got it together this year. He said, I feel real excited. The car tested really well. Next to him, Larry Foyt. Greg Connors, a crew chief on that car. Greg said, Larry called me two weeks ago and said, hey, let's throw this thing together. Let's go down to Daytona. Got one of my old cup cars. He said, we get a Joey Arrington motor, and guess what? The effort's paid off. Great qualifying run for him today. We'll start moving a little bit quicker through the field, and as you look at the rest of these names, guys, let me get a couple of last-minute thoughts from you. Kenny, you're starting to see the temperatures come up in the car. You're starting to warm up. What are you thinking about as a driver now as you get ready to kick off your first race of the season? Well, one thing you're noticing uh, as they follow the pace car off turn four is that sun is brutal coming off turn four. That's one of the things you'll notice here until that sun goes down a little bit later after we get into part of this race. That's a fairly blind spot. But you're just uh, you just got all your uh, adrenaline going and thinking this is what you've been working for all winter. This but we've been what you waited for, and now you're finally going to get to go racing. Yep, and, and I tell you, again, you got to be patiently aggressive. Got a lot of good race cars out there here today, um, so you have to use your head. You have to be there at the end, but guess what? You got to stay in the draft here at Daytona. It's so, so important to stay in the draft here at Daytona, and it's something that you have to do, but you have to be patiently aggressive. And some cars already visiting Pitt Road, including Frank Kimmel. Looks like they're just topping him off a little bit. The six is visited down there, too, and Justin Ashburn. And it looks like the 64 has some issues as well as that car of Matt Hagen's has uh, made a quick stop as well. Well, Frank Kimmel come in, guys, as you know, you can probably agree with me, he has nothing to lose. He's starting on the back of the pack. He's packing that fuel cell full of fuel. They made one or two laps around this two and a half mile super speedway and it does take fuel to get around here so if they go along green guess what frank will possibly be able to lap the field and then if a caution comes out it could play to his benefit of course we're going to have some great onboard looks for you here today frank kimmel six-time champ is going to have a heck of a ride coming up from the back of the field and we're going to show it all to you there's frank looking right at him you can't really see the fire in his eyes there can you but i guarantee <laughs> it's there Ken Weaver will carry a camera for us as well, starting in 32nd. Here's Ken's view. Reigning Rookie of the Year, T.J. Bell, the hot shot from out west, now living in North Carolina, starting 28th today. Talked to T.J. He said, we got the car better. He said, it's going to draft well. We just wasn't a great qualifier. Johnny Leonard is going to roll out 23rd, car number 13. It's a good look at him as he loosens up himself and his wheels scrubbing off. All the dirt, and Mike Garrity, we talked about the new team with the hands group. There's a look right off of his roof. He's got a great starting spot up near the front. Eddie Sharp, the crew chief on that car, they struggled a little bit, you know, during, during practice and qualifying, but uh, they got it together, and uh, hopefully they'll have a great race. Kenny, you know this racetrack so well. Tell us a little bit about this famed Daytona International Speedway as we take a look at the track map. When you look right there, this little thing is, is pretty narrow. Uh, the front straightaway, 3,800 feet, banked 18 degrees. 18 degrees is more banking than most of our tracks have. 
You go down into turn one, turn two, 31 degree bank, it's pretty rough. Been a long time since repaved. 3,400 foot back straightaway, which you think you wouldn't wreck on, but a lot of times wreck on there because that's where people are positioning themselves to, for getting in turn three. Turn three and four, 34 degrees. You run out of room a little bit off turn four, just, just like it gets a little bit tied off too. Three wide is a, is a stretch here, but uh, we'll see it. Dan, it takes some unique uh, strategy to win this thing. And let's take a look at a little bit of the race analysis with 41 cars starting here this afternoon. Yep, the pit window, 30, 35 to 45. Some of the teams, I talked to some of the top crew chiefs, they said they may stretch it to 50 laps, maybe 53, but that would be pushing it. So that's going to be interesting. That could play a big role here today at Daytona. Again, this could, if it stays green, it could turn into a fuel mileage race. As you see, pit road speeds 55 mile an hour. You have to maintain 55 mile an hour all the way down pit road, and you don't want to get Bust the pit road to top off. Don Radabaugh, what's going on down there? Well, quite a bit these days. I want to tell you what's going on with the seven car. Hendrick Motorsports developmental driver Kyle Krisloff via Bobby Gearhart Racing is slated for 12 Speedway races this year. His ARCA boss and car owner Gearhart told me that Kyle has the best car in the draft, much better than his own. Didn't seem to bother Gearhart, though. He said, my job for Hendricks was to put him in the very best car I could. I did my job. Now it's up to Kyle Krisloff to do his job. Bob Dillner. A big development for Indiana's Chad Blunt. This morning they found a broken track bar on that 67 machine. He was supposed to start 15th. He will now have to go to the rear of the field, and he is planning to draft with Frank Kimmel. To Lindsay Zarniak. You guys see this picture? You have any idea at all who it is? I've got one hint for you. He used to sit behind the wall while his father worked as a tire specialist for Bill Elliott in the Cup Series. Yes, you are looking at him. This is Walt Brannon. He is driving his race car today. He said he never believed he would be here at Daytona. He could kill his father for giving me this picture, but we know that he'll be psyched if he gets up front. As we said, some 19 cars had to go home uh, from this huge field. Let's show you real quickly those cars that went home. Amazing. Andy Belmont didn't make it. Sam Bean came down here with a great situation, and, and they didn't have a chance to get in the show. Uh, Daryl Basham didn't make the show. Ryan Wild. Keselowski. Keselowski's have been in the Arca Series for years. Long, long time. What a great field of race cars. It, it's, the Arca Series is just getting so competitive, guys, that there's just so many cars showing up that, it, you know, somebody's got to go home, unfortunately. Well, the best I figure, when everyone came in that last lap, Frank Kimmel's gained about 10 spots already. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. The 2005 Arca Remax Series getting set to take the green for the traditional season over for the 42nd time here at Daytona. Get set, ladies and gentlemen, Speed Channel, you're home for the Arca Series, and we are going green and green now. Green now and racing. This is what we've all been waiting for as a race car driver. We sit in the car, we wait for this moment, now we can calm down and go to work. I don't know if calm down is the right word here just for a few laps, but uh, <laughs> they're going to work, that's for sure. Feels like we never took a break, does it? Back at it and race. Wow, what? It takes a lap to a lap and a half to sometimes two laps to get these cars up to speed, right, Kenny? And, and the biggest thing right here in these first few laps is to get sorted out, get single file, and hopefully get somebody's draft. You see that silver car there up on the high side? You don't want to be up out of the draft early in the game. No, these guys are all doing real good here. They've, they've got themselves in line, and what's that going to enable, enable them to do is that first group of maybe 10 cars are there, so we'll be able to get away a little bit uh, until those guys behind them get, get away from being double filed. Bobby Gerhardt, the leader. Some three wide racing a little bit deeper in the pack. See Frank Kimmel coming through the field. Again, he's got to go. He's got to stay in that draft. He's got to get towards the front, but he's just got to stay out of anybody else's map. He's got Norm Benning right alongside of him in the blue 84. Norm Another Pesky. veteran. Wow, well, strong, strong corner for Norm there uh, here at Daytona. Frank has to get in that draft, and again, he sees them cars up in front of him. As you look ahead, you have to get in the line and get in that air. Uh, and that, as you watch Benny Chastain coming around, Frank goes from last to 27th in one lap, and you talk about a great corner for Norm Benning, Dan, but you can see the difference in the horsepower as he came down that long 3,400-foot back straightaway, and Frank just motored on past. Exactly. 
See Bobby Gearhart up front. I talked to Bobby in detail. He had a lot of problems with his car. The car qualified good, but guess what, guys? When you have a good, fast, good, great qualifying race car, sometimes they don't always drive as good as they, you like them to. They worked and worked hard on this car, and he said, I sure hope we got to drive better for the race. Norm Benning hung up on the outside and smoking, Kenny, as we came off of turn two. I can't believe that's anything good. Don't look good. Looks more than tire smoke, I would say, Ken, wouldn't you? Yeah, not, not uh, you know, it was still smoking somewhat going down the straightaway. Usually when they quit smoking like that, uh, it means they're just running out of whatever fluid that is. Yeah, the next thing is yeah, it good? Yeah, it's usually good. Or it's overheating already. But you run as much tape on the front grill over in these cars as you can because the more tape is more speed. Keeps the air from getting uh, trapped in there and slowing the car down. Sometimes you put too much tape on them, they just run hot. But we got, we got, uh, a few of them smoking down the back straightaway. Maybe they got the same virus that Norm did. Wow. Yeah, we got two smokers at once there going one's, in turn one. One is Norm, and it looks like the 33 car is the other one on the outside, Robert Richardson. With a lot of smoke coming right out of the cockpit. That's the that. left rear tire. Yep, looks like he's got a tire coming off that car. And he's already got tire marks down the side of the car. So we'll take an opportunity to take a break with Bobby Gerhardt leading here at Daytona. A super speedway program, so we should be seeing more of Robert Richardson, the driver out of McKinney, Texas, before the season is over. There's Norm Benning. Now, Norm, we're getting a report, was actually uh, leaking before we even came to the green, so it didn't take long for the smoke to start pouring out of that car, and hopefully he's been able to get that fixed. Norm, longtime veteran of the series, almost won the... The dirt race, uh, where was it, Kenny? Was it Springfield? Uh, it was Springfield. He oh, said he was running you boys down. Consistent uh, top ten finisher in the, in the uh, point standings for the ARCA Remax Series. And he's one of the guys you can count on. Always there every week and does it uh, with a kind of more and more limited budget. Side. Right. Absolutely. There's uh, Mark Gibson, the Williams Brothers lumber car. Unfortunately, he's going to have to come in and pull them fenders off them them tires. He uh, made contact with a 33 car. Uh, may or may not have damaged the suspension on that car, but he's going to have to come in and pull them fenders off them tires, can he, or uh, that won't last long. Well, he's been racing ARCA for years. Began back in 1982. Wow. With the ARCA series. The green flag, Kenny Pitsonello. That's our uh, flagman stands out there uh, on the exit of turn four, so you got plenty of time when you see the flag to make the decision whether to pit or not. I see they got him way out there, Kenny. Sometimes there's always been a discrepancy of not being able to see the flagman off before, and I know I've had that, that gripe before, and I'm sure you have, but looks like uh, they've got him pushed way out there. Well, you know, he can do it right now. Uh, you know, the accident wasn't in that area, and they're under the yellow flag. Of course, the, green, uh, the pit's always open on the green flag conditions, but uh, he's making sure that, uh, that he's out there where everybody see him, and he can run back in behind that wall real quick. <laughs> Man, Bobby Gearhart, I was talking to Bobby all through the week, talked to his crew chief, David Lyon. He's got 8,500 miles of testing miles from the shop to Talladega. He tested five times at Talladega to get that car up to speed. That shows you the effort that these teams put in these cars for the super speedways. Don Radebaugh, what do you have for us in the pits? Well, I got Norm Benning, who's disappointed early on. This is his second stop on pit road already up on jack stands on the left side. Hood up, they do have an oil leak, and series officials just told him he would not be going out at this time until he fixed that oil leak. Norm over the radio said, I was flying, I had a rocket, and he did look very fast going by Frank Kimmel, but he's up on stands now. Oil leak, I saw water coming out the overflow as well. Not a good situation early on for the Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania veteran, Norm Benning. Tough day for Norm Benning because he was really coming up through the field. He's finished in the top ten in the ARCA Series points seven of the last eight seasons, including six in a row. Strong, strong contender in the ARCA Series. One more look at this incident from on board. Well, Gibson just moved dramatically up the racetrack, didn't he? Yeah, and uh, we can see the, the, the oil leak there. Pretty severe leak off Norm's car. Just caused Mark to get loose, would you say, guys? And, and just slid up the racetrack and unfortunately got into 33 car. Work continues on the Gibson car, and we'll continue to uh, take care of some business so we can show you more green flag racing when we come back to the legendary Daytona International Speedway. Has come down to Daytona to kick off their season. You're looking on board Mike Garrity's car. He rides along in 10th right now. Bob Dillner. 
down here in the Williams Brothers Lumber team pits for Mark Gibson, and they just came in, and he has some significant damage to the front air dam on that car on the left side. So they brought the car in, took some of that 200 mile per hour duct tape, and affixed it to the front end and also the right side of that car, but still some big holes in the front air dam on that car. Not something you want to have here at Daytona, guys. You do not want air getting in the hood of that race car because it'll really slow it down. Getting ready to go back to green, keeping an eye on the pace car. Pulling off, and Bobby Gerhardt will start rowing up through the gears. Back at it. Pretty nice when you can look in your mirror and you got two team cars behind you. Yeah. That's a very comforting feeling. <laughs> <laughs> Great feeling, especially if they don't own super speed right now. You know, one, if you guys work together, if you have three cars that work together, you know you can just about keep each other up front. If one gets booted, you can, you can actually run high and help the guy get back in the air and work harder. So there, all three of them cars are working together here today. They don't. Chrysloff trying to close in so he can get up in there and pick up some lessons from the old master as well. What a great opportunity for a couple of young drivers like Blake Fees and Chrysloff to be able to watch a guy like Bobby Gerhardt working his magic around here at Daytona. If you want to learn something, just pay attention to this onboard cameras. Frank Kimmel makes his way up from the 41st starting spot now running in 23rd. It's an unbelievable opportunity uh, you know, for Chris Loft being 18 uh, and, and be a Henrik development driver. That's uh, quite the opportunity. It really, really is, these young guys. It, it's funny, all these young guys that I talk to, they got a great head on them. They don't, their ego is not as big as you would think it is, and I think they've been toned down by the people that run these teams, the management force, and says, guys, just give it time. You'll be where you want to be in a few years, but you've got to do what we tell you to do. They could good people. They surround them with really good people, and the results really show. Lindsey Blakeby is doing a great job sitting there in second place for now. He is, and I talked to him earlier. He's one of the guys that's very excited to get more experience here. He did just get on with his crew chief, Gordon Gibbs, and he said he's a little bit tight coming off of two, but otherwise he feels pretty good. Guys, i got to believe right now as we see Chris Lop tucking down a little bit, picking up some help. Is he going to make a run on his teammate? Steele trying to come with him in that black 44. And we got a change for second. That's hungry right there. The 44 car is Tim Steele. He is hungry. He wants to win this race. He wants to lead this race right now. As you see him drop to the bottom, he's, oh. he's run so good. Here we got a lot of action oh. back in the field. Kenny, that looks a little nervous inside in the middle of that pack. <laughs> I'd be a heck of a lot more nervous if I was in there. Oh, uh, it made man. me nervous up here. Yes, it did. That, the, they missed the golden opportunity to tear up a lot of stuff there, but uh, heck, they made it. They, they did the right thing, but... Uh, Lots of lots of air, Kenny, right? Just bucking off them cars. What causes them cars to do that? I'll, I'll let you go ahead and tell us. No, sometimes you just don't wreck no matter how hard you try. <laughs> <laughs> that was an accident waiting for a place to happen. And I guarantee you, Frank was having bad thoughts going through his mind at that time. He was. Quickest way to get yourself out of it, get by them all. You can see him tucked to the bottom and pass two or three more cars. <laughs> There's the four car, the Hans Group car, on board with Mike Garrity. He's doing exactly what his crew chief, Eddie Sharp, told him last night to do. Just sit back here, ride along. He's sitting right now in eighth. Now up to seventh. Up, oh, finally, the wreck. Oh, look out! Boy, that could have been bad. Oh, Real man. Bad. That was the 88 car right smack in the middle of that whole mess. Eddie Mercer from Pensacola, Florida, long-time yeah. short track racer, been around racing a long, long time in the Bobby Johns Florida Shrimp car. Too bad for him. Benny Chastain involved in it as well in that white 98. Ugh. The Drew White car looks like he pulls his wind in that down, which uh, tells the officials that he's okay. Good sign there. Eddie took a pretty hard, hard hit there, but appeared to be all right. Could have been a much worse hit, though. Uh, I'm telling you, these these guys in these cars, even the ones that uh, don't have as much uh, super speedway experience as some of the other ones, you know, they've watched, they've paid attention. Ark has done a good job talking to them in a rookie meeting, 
and that you know they did a good job of missing what could have been a lot worse there they really 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 did and the last thing you want to do is jump on the brake pedal it just sends your car flying in, in multiple directions and everybody did a great job coming off a of Ford Air to avoid that wreck there you see the safety crew attendant Eddie Merton let's take another look at this guys and see what we see okay there's Mercer oh he oh. gets turned <laughs> by the 17 yeah 17 just gets in the back of Eddie Mercer. Eddie, unfortunately, wide open as he comes off the corner, nowhere to go. And when you slide back up the rate, once you're backwards, you're you're just hanging on. When he collects another, it's A.J. Hendrickson that was in the 17. This is where it gets scary, right Man, here. Man, great job getting through that. Still made some contact, but again, uh, you didn't see nobody jump on the brake pedals and send the car out of control. Yeah, a, uh, Mercer didn't have a chance there. Uh, he just got run in. Run into the, the back of. <laughs> well, no way. Yeah, he got run into the back of. Kenny, is there a, a scarier feeling than this one right here where Mercer's sliding back down the track and you know there's more cars coming? No, that's that's right that's right up there, right there. At least, you know, you're not driver's side against them. But we can see looking into that uh, sun there, and I guarantee it's a lot worse with the down looking from the driver's seat up through that sun and the smoke. So uh, it gets your attention. Bob Dillner. Just want to let all you super late model fans know out there that Eddie Mercer is okay, but here's what happened. Eddie O radioed in to his crew and told him, hey, I had to get on the brakes because somebody checked up in front of me, and the guy behind me just did not stop. And that's what the replay showed. You guys were talking about that, but Eddie Mercer did have to get on the brakes, and that's why the guy behind him actually hit him. Nothing you can do. When a car checks up in front of you, you really have no choice. You know if you stay in the gas, you, you're going to run in the back of him, so you just have to back out of the gas. But it's a chain reaction. Unfortunately, super speedway racing, that's what happens. Well, you pretty much know you're going to get either get hit or hit somebody else at that point in the game when you're ready to get a pack that tight. But that's what super speedway racing is all about. Second caution of the day, first big wreck of the afternoon. Bobby Gerhardt continues to lead. 13 of the scheduled 80 complete. One race and uh, hoping to uh, continue that along throughout the rest of the season, too, if you can, as TJ Bill. Same car finished seventh at Talladega. He told me the car does not qualify well, but it does draft well. Tell you what, here's another strong performance we haven't got to talk about yet, but... Uh, you know, this is one of Larry Foyt's uh, old cup cars that he went to Joey Arrington, got an engine for. Uh, pretty proud about this because the BAM team, uh, you see BAM on the back, but they're, uh, they're his pit crew today. But your boys. Larry started uh, 16th and very quietly but very quickly has got that car up to fourth. And this is like a two-week effort to put this together. So we're uh, very excited to see him running good tonight. Should be very proud of that. Don Radebaugh. I just wanted to add to the Larry Foyt deal, if I could. I wanted to clear something up. A lot of people always wonder, is he actually the son of A.J. or the grandson? Actually, he is the biological grandson of A.J. Foyt, the four-time Indy 500 winner, but he is also his adopted son. A.J. adopted his grandson, his biological grandson, if you can figure that out. He is the only driver in the field who ran in last year's Indy 500 and Daytona 500. Here's Lindsey Zarniak. Thank you, Don. Keith Mert had started eighth. He had made it all the way up to fifth and then became one of the casualties. What would you say? What can I say? Uh, <laughs> I didn't say it. I mean, we just had bad luck with the engine at the top. The top end must have let go. That's all we know right now. I mean, it's not the bottom end. Oil pressure was good. The car was running good. Restart, we started falling back <clears throat> and then uh, just had motor trouble. You said that might have been the cause of the commotion out there on the been. track. Yeah, it could have been. We, uh, I was looking in the mirror and I could see them start spinning behind us, so it must have been, must have been something that I caused, part of it. All right, Keith Mert will stick around because he will be running in the Bush race next weekend, guys. You can see Kurt's car uh, or Keith's car uh, slowing pretty dramatically in the bottom there, Kenny. The veteran uh, late model dirt driver out of Patuka, Kentucky, having some problems mechanically. Yeah, that was uh, Frank. Uh, Frank went up a little bit higher and went went around it, and then the uh, 88 car checked up a little bit and got hit. Kenny, as we were just getting ready to go green, you were talking about the fact that the sun was so bright. It's starting to dip down now. The track pretty much covered in shadows the majority of the way around. What do you think? Oh, it's just going to be a lot more comforting uh, for the drivers when we come off turn four because that's where the sun was, was really in a troublesome spot. These windshields get so sandblasted, it's just that much harder to see through. So they're, they're over the worst part of it now. 
All right. Well, we'll take care of some more business while we have the opportunity. They're not set to go back to green just yet. We want to show you all the green flag laps. So we'll join Johnny Leonard and the gang when we come back to Daytona after these words. Its way into the Daytona International Speedway to enjoy good Arca Remax Series action. Here's a look at what we've seen so far after 17 of the 80 laps have been completed. Bobby Gerhardt has pretty much led this thing from beginning to now, starting on the pole. Well, he's, in, he's bringing them down for the restart, but he's got some hungry people behind him, so we'll see what happens here. Till coming up to speed as we come to a speed shot off of turn two. Bobby obviously got that car sorted out again, um, having handling problems with that all through practice. Was not happy at all. He had to make the car drivable. They had one last chance to make the car right uh, before qualifying, and then they were pretty much locked in for the race. They must have made the mic right moves on that car. Battle for 10th. That's J.J. Yaley in the red number two upstairs up along the wall. And the 12th car of Mario Goslin running with it. Mario's going to get a little help. Uh, now it's JJ was going to get a little help there from the car behind. Back to the lead pack. Big, strong pack up front. Good 10, 12 cars. As you see, they try, want to fall in line and possibly break away from that second pack. It's so important to get in line. Find you a good partner. Yeah, well, we just uh, looked there, and all of a sudden, Kyle Krisloff is at the back of that pack. Well, that's funny. He got to shuffle. We've been there before. <laughs> is he having troubles, or did he just get shuffled, do you think? I don't know. If you think of if he was having big troubles, he wouldn't quite be that close. But that car was bouncing around, moving around a little bit more than I think it uh, probably needed to be. Son of IndyCar veteran Steve Chrysoloff. Funny, sometimes you get behind a car and uh, just get some real unusual air off a car. It doesn't like to draft with that guy, and you have to get away from him. Possibly uh, that's what all that bouncing around was about. Again, there's Yaley in the two. Now joining into this fight is that 25 car, Billy Venturini, son of the ARCA veteran, Bill Venturini. Made quite a name for himself competing in this series. Kind of the first family of ARCA competition in a lot of ways, the Venturinis, along with the famous names like the Kimmels. And the Bowsers. The Bowsers. Keselowski's. Yep. But I tell you what, Billy has done extremely good the last several years, and especially on the restrictor plate races. He's really excelled there. Has calmed down. It, Kenny, as you know, it takes years and years to try and figure out this air for, like we talk about. They always talked about Dale Earnhardt, how he could see the air in these race cars. It's just an understanding of know how, how this air comes off these race cars, when to pass the guy, when not to, because if you pull out, you're not in the right place, you go on back. But if you do it the right time, the right place, when you got to run on a guy, it can take you right to the front. Well, and you got to have someone behind you helping you. That's for sure. Yep, you really do. And that's just experience. It takes experience to learn that. That's years and years of being here, going around these super speedways, Daytona and Talladega, to get to that point. Kenny, is it one of those deals where all of a sudden the light just goes on and all of a sudden you get it, how to do the super speedway racing as opposed to maybe short track racing or dirt track racing? Well, I don't I don't know about that. Uh, we, some of these kids, you know, they've watched and they've they've raced whatever their whole lives, and they come in and they get it and they get it instantly. And, and they do a real good job. So, you know, it, it it took me forever, and I'm not sure I got it figured out yet. But, <laughs> but uh, it, you know, it took me for a while for the light to come on. But some of these kids come in here, it makes a difference kind of equipment you come in with. But they get her figured out quick, and they're doing a real good job. I'm starting to think maybe Chrysalop just got shuffled back because the 7 is starting to chug its way back to the front here, Bob. You are exactly right, Ralph. He got schooled, and those were the words of his crew chief, Billy Gerhardt, on that restart there. The guy pulled to the inside and just freight trained right by him. But Billy Gerhardt told me, as you can see him on the track, that is a dynamite car. Billy says the five and the seven are equal, and they will be at the front of the race throughout this race. And he's doing it by himself right now, Dan. He's just pulled away from those guys and starting his motor his way back up to the front. This big pack right here is now real Tim Steele back in. That black 44 is slipping back into the clutches of that fight between Yaley and Venturini side by side with Yaley on the outside. Venturini in the blue 25. Tim's just got to get hooked up with the right car. Sometimes two cars will not draft together. You could get behind one guy, get behind him, and the car will not move and jump behind another car, and you could pick up one to two mile an hour in some cases. So you just have to find the car that likes to tap dance with your car. And sometimes 
it takes a while to do that. All right, so Kenny, you're sitting there and you're running through the trioval like uh, Steele was. Now the backstretch, you see two lines of cars and they're coming at you at equal speeds. How do you choose? Do I take the guys on the outside or the guys on the bottom? Uh, well, here it looks like that he didn't make a big decision. <laughs> he stayed in the middle and they split him. Yes, so he did. I don't think he really made much of a decision there. He made know? his mind up for him. Yeah. 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 The decision has yeah. been made. Maybe the, maybe the middle wasn't the right spot. <laughs> uh, exactly. Unfortunately, hopefully Tim will get back in line and find a car that really helps his go. T.J. Bell on board with him, running along in 17th. And look at there's the 46 of Frank Kimmel up to 12th. Remember, he started 41st, last place in the field today. Yeah, I believe the, the fifth car in line there, it's uh, the number 65, is uh, leaking a little fluid from uh, Walt Brandon from, from where it was. Oh, no. The 62 of Claire Zimmerman out of Denver, the Hunt Tiller Corporation Pontiac. Out of the trioval. Wow. He's okay. Looks like we've got a little air underneath that nose now. It won't work. Oh boy, there's a coil spring rolling down yeah. the track. Not a good sign. Looks like he's okay. The wind index down. Uh, very important to see the coil spring rolling down the racetrack. Here's a replay here. Looks like. Oh, wow. Man. Oh, boy. That was a lot more than wow. we've seen. Big ride. Looks like he just got down on the apron, Kenny. Is that what it looked like to you? I didn't see the very start of that enough. I know one thing. That. Uh, <laughs> That's going to make everybody nervous. Wow. Yeah. We'll, we'll take another look at that replay. And uh, now, like, maybe he just got down on the apron. The car got loose. I was trying to figure out how the front end got bent up without, you know, being all mangled. It yeah. got bent up when the, the car didn't that much air. Wow. Sure did. Let's look at it again. He got loose yeah. up underneath that other car. Under the racetrack right there. Wow. Roof flaps come up on the race car, kept that race car down on the racetrack. They did their job. So important. Another safety innovation that the ARCA Remax Series has brought in from the NASCAR Series, is, and it looks like it worked here today at Daytona. For quite a few feet, there was only a couple of inches of that nose touching the ground, and that was it. We see the nose bent in the front of this race car, and that's not from hitting any type of wall or anything. As Kenny said, it's the car. The back of the race car got up in the air. It just actually bent the whole front of that nose. Well, Clara was uh, planning on spending most of the time thinking right about now. He's figuring that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> he was thinking Salem or Toledo would have yeah. been a whole lot better place to spin out right then. Wow. Oh, man. Well, glad to see Claire is okay. Well, we'll take care of some more business while they clean up the situation down here in the trioval. Our Karimak series providing the excitement and the thrills here at Daytona. Big problems on pit road as one car has slid right through the barriers. That's the 94 car of fees right into an opening on pit lane. A very, very scary moment on pit road. Lindsay, you're big problem. Big problems down on pit road. Looks like they pushed the 94 car back. Uh, hopefully nobody was injured in that incident. Looks like everybody got up and appeared to walk away. It doesn't look like anybody's injured. I'll tell you, they were coming in. This is um, Blake Beast's Bush crew. He came in. It just looked like he dove straight across to the left, right at the opening of pit road. I know their plan initially was just to come in, take four tires, obviously. They're having to check some things out now, but it does seem like they've taken care of what the issue is. We'll find out more about that. Well, that car went skidding right through that opening. And I, I can tell you from watching it that there were people that were knocked over from the car coming through. You can see some of the photographers and stuff on the ground scattered around that were working, taking pictures of that. And they're going to push Feast's car right behind the wall. And we'll get an update for you. Uh, we saw some of those folks bounce right back up, which is, which is great news. Bob, what can you tell us about Bobby Gerhardt's stuff? Well, interesting strategy for Bobby Gerhardt down here on pit road, a two-tire stop for the leader of this race. Now, his teammate technically in this race, of course, is Kyle Krisilov. Billy Gerhardt, Bobby's brother, calling the shots there on that crew. They had a four-tire stop, but a very, very slow one. They lost a bunch of positions. Kyle Krisilov on pit road. Kenny, there are three openings along pit road uh, that are used to get the cars off of the racetrack, and they just, I mean, 
there's no way of expecting that to happen in any one of those particular areas. It's just, I've never seen that before. Well, no, I really haven't. Uh, you, you, you like to pit by one of those openings because it makes it so much easier uh, to get in or to get out of, depending on which, which opening you pick. But I would speculate there that uh, it's just a lot of enthusiasm entering the pits. Too much momentum, probably uh, got on the brakes uh, too hard, locked it up, and from the angle that the car hit the wall, it just slid right through the through the pits. Uh, Kenny, I'm sure that you've had, <laughs> in your career, I'm sure there's been a time or two where you slid through the wall through, past your pit stall, but unfortunately, when you're coming in at an angle like that, um, like Blake was, he just, you know, his forward motion just sent him right in the edge of that retaining wall. Uh, unfortunately, the, their pit stall was right there where the break in that wall is, so um, you know, unfortunately, he got through it, but hopefully everybody will be on there. Yeah, it's just, uh, boy, it's tough. The thing you got to remember, we, we watch these guys, uh, no matter what series, trucks, bush, ARCA, turn these things over 200 mile an hour when they stop to get out. These guys that are stepping over that wall, even when the cars are going by here, it's probably 45, 55 mile an hour pit road speed. They've got, they've got their helmet, you know, and, and that's it. And they step out in front of those cars, well, they're not going 200 mile an hour, but you don't step out in front of 45 mile an hour cars without rolling the dice and getting hurt. And uh, boy, NASCAR's done so good, along with ARCA, implementing new rules, but there's some things that can still happen. Yes, there is. And you see uh, Blake get out of that car. Of course, he was was very, very upset, I'm sure, and uh, felt like about an inch tall, I'm sure. I, we know that uh, it's a tough break for him. Top young, young gun gets started in his business, and uh, he'll bounce back. Certainly a scary moment inside and outside of the cockpit of Blake Pease's car. We will update you on more as we learn here at Speed Channel. The cars getting back out on the track, pit stops completed. We are under yellow for this incident here. Claire Zimmerman, who also is okay. It has been a wild and crazy few minutes here with the Advanced Auto Parts Series. Uh, the, the race here getting underway. There's the Advanced Auto Parts port back entry of Frank Kimmel. Season opener here for the ARCA Remax Series. And Frank Kimmel has moved his way up to 12. Don Radeval, what can you tell us about the 46? Well, I can tell you, Ralph, that they had a very excellent pit stop. They picked up three spots on pit road alone. Bill Kimmel, the crew chief, had to change the right front, or uh, both front tires, actually. He normally doesn't do that, but they had a crew member not show up. After the pit stop, Frank called back and said, hey, Billy, how's the tires? Bill said, I don't know. I haven't caught my breath yet. And then Frank came back and said, man, we got a really good race, race car here, guys, and I think we're in great shape. Bob Dillner. On the other side of the spectrum, the number seven, Kyle Krizilov pit stop. They had an awful pit stop. First, Kyle overshot the pit, a rookie mistake. Then when they pushed it back, they were too close to the pit wall, and that made it very difficult. Then they spilled all sorts of fuel in the pit box as well. He has lost a lot of spots, but Billy Gerhardt, the crew chief for them, says, hey, the kid can make it up. Well, here's the car out front right now. It's the 64 entry of Matt Hagens out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Great run for Matt, um, the Country Joe Holmes car. He said, Dan, I'm not sure we're going to race this car. He said, I brought this car. I wanted to see how well it drafted. He said, my main concern is Joey Miller. Joey's part of his team. He said he went out and tested the car, and he was like one or two tenths within Joey Miller, he said, heck, I might have me a good, great race car. I may not have to pull in after all. One thing about that car is you'll notice with all of the Dodges in the Arca Remax series, they all are Intrepids right now. The new Charger, which you'll be seeing uh, later on tonight in the Budweiser shootout with the NASCAR Nextel Cup series, has not been approved yet for Arca competition. So all the Dodges in this series for now will be Intrepid bodies. ARCA does a good job when uh, something gets uh, approved right off the bat uh, for an Xtel Cup. They don't necessarily make it illegal for ARCA right off the way, uh, bat, so everybody doesn't think they have to go out and change their bodies real quick. They let it cycle through for a year or so. The name you might not recognize in the 11, the face might look a little bit familiar. That's Chad McCombie. Uh, Chad just had this starring role as Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the movie 3. Well, he's feeling about like Dale Earnhardt Jr. right now in second place there. He can keep that car there. He'll have a great run here today. 
Andy Hillenberg uh, fielding that car for him. Andy said he's a great driver. He's an instructor at his class. He told the boy, Andy said, hang around me and I'll make you a star. Well, when he made a star in the movies, he said, well, I'm a star, but I'm not the star I want to be. Andy said, just give it a little bit more time and maybe we can make you a race star. That's 100 victories in go karts with WKA in their dirt series. Lindsay, what can you tell us about Blake Fees? I'm right side, outside of his hauler right now. I saw them before grabbing that was for Blake. He said no. One of the crew guys underwent some uh, some bangs and bruises during that incident. But Blake, we're told, is okay. He's inside just a little bit shaken up, and we're told that he'll be coming out here in just a few minutes. So hopefully we'll catch a word with him. All right, Lindsay, uh, I'm sure he, uh, he's going to need to calm down a little bit. Well, you can notice the cars are coming down pit road, and they're going to come to a stop. We have a red flag condition here now with our season opening event for the ARCA Remax Series. Reason being, if you've been with us, Claire Zimmerman took a wild ride through the tri-oval, and there is some fencing issues that they would like to take a look at along the outside of the racetrack and make some proper repairs or make sure that everything is okay before we go back to green. So, with 32 laps complete in our season opener, we're going to throw the red flag, bring things to a halt. We'll take care of some more business. Come right back to Daytona International Speedway. Which is what damaged the fencing here. There's Zimmerman in the 62. Watch this car here in the white car. Had, had all four uh, tires off the ground temporarily there, then got the front end back down a little bit, which was a good thing it did. It was losing altitude instead of gaining when it did hit the wall. And that's a key. Yes, that's that's <laughs> very key. But, you know, you see the cables there. See, one, two, three, four cables. Though, I mean, they have as much safety protection as uh, you can possibly put here. But, uh, boy, you know, you look at something like that, you just never have too much. NASCAR doing a great job with these facilities. Years ago, we never had them big cables, Kenny. Possibility that car would have been up in the grandstands. Just a tribute to NASCAR and all the racetracks that we race on, just looking out for not only the competitors, but the fans in the sport. Kenny, you've been racing longer than these two guys next to you combined, probably. Uh, you've had opportunities, unfortunately, to just sit in a car like Frank Kimmel is doing right now while repairs of the track or big red flags are taking place. Well, what's going through your mind right now if you're Frank Kimmel? Well, I think uh, Frank's sitting back there in 12th spot, knowing that uh, this uh, this race is is not even quite to halfway yet. So he's thinking that uh, he's pretty good, pretty good shape now. He doesn't have to worry about restarting uh, or starting 41st like his initial starting spot. So he's dodged a lot of bullets. And he, you know, he doesn't. He's not planning on going anywhere tonight. So it, taking a little break right now is not too big a deal. Now, if it's late in the race and you're right up in the front of that deal and and they have a red flag. You, you don't want it. You want to just keep going. But uh, it just works on different ways at different times. Kyle, as, as a young driver getting your career started, I'm sure you've experienced part of what happened to Blake Fees, and that's trying to find that pit stall. It can be a very tricky thing. Unfortunately, we haven't seen it escalate to the problem that it did for Blake in the past. But can you explain just how tough that is? Well, it's pretty difficult. I mean, just for myself coming into this, the sport of doing pit stops and things like that, I mean, obviously it's difficult coming down pit road with as many pit signs as there are. Everybody tries the fluorescent yellows, the fluorescent oranges, and every kind of type of color, bright color that they can bring out so you can find your pit sign. But since everybody's got the same color, not you know, mind and thought, that it's just so hard to find yours and pick yours out exactly. So. For us coming down pit road, we try to find that sign and then just zone in on it so we know where our pit stall is and you have a spotter as well that'll count you down, you know, 10 to go, 5 to go, whatever, so it's a little easier for you to catch that sign. But again, as soon as you catch that sign, then you have to watch what's going on around you still on pit road as far as running into other cars and stuff like that or other guys pulling off to their pits. So there's too many things that you really have to look out for coming down pit road. Bob activity uh, out near the race cars as well under this red flag. What's happening there? Even though we have the red flag and pit road is officially closed right now, ARCA has allowed a flurry of activity on pit road. They have allowed one member per team to walk down pit road and go and see their driver. This is just behind where pit road ends is where all the drivers are actually stopped on the racetrack. So they are allowed to bring their driver a drink, talk with them a little bit. But the key here is, guys, they cannot make any adjustments to those race cars. Okay, Bob. Well, while they uh, take care of the drivers and repair the fencing, 
again, we'll continue to take care of some business so that when we do go back to green here at Daytona with the season opener for the ARCA Remax Series, we'll be able to show you as much of it as we can here on the fencing along the trioval area. As you saw earlier, Claire Zimmerman took a wild ride through the trioval, car lifting up off the ground, sliding across the pavement and then into the wall, taking out a small section of the fencing over there, which the Speedway staff is now repairing before we did on pit road, which uh, is the reason for the red flag, and Lindsay Zarniak has more on that story. You guys saw how shaken up Blake Feast was by this incident. Take a look at his car. I'm scooting over as to not catch the radiator here, but um, they're taking apart. The front nose was all banged up, they said, and as you can clearly see, there's no way they're putting this car back out on the track. They said Blake was here just to gain experience, and um, so they're not going to try to get back out there and get in anybody else's way. Well, that car went nose first into one of the three openings on Pitt Road in, into the uh, abutment of cement at the far end, for example, here. Not this particular stall, but that's about where it hit. Kenny, NASCAR and ARCA and, and these big speedways have done a great job of when situations have happened that we're not used to see, responding to them. Looking at these openings, that's the one where Blake went through. Is it possible, do you think, to maybe just put up an Armco guardrail of some sort on a hinge that could swing open and shut? And we need to get somebody back there, and that would keep the car from going through? Oh, I, I would think uh, I would think it would be very easy. But let me tell you, I had never <laughs> I had never thought about doing something for that. Right. Uh, you know, we had the same type situation at our little track in Missouri and Peebley, which we finally put a gate up. But it was the outside wall. I'd never thought about that being a danger spot on pit road. But we just saw it, and it only takes one time. It'd be real easy to do, so I'm sure it'll be looked at. Certainly will be something that uh, the folks will be taking a good, close look at, I'm sure. Well, one of the stories we've been talking about throughout the day is Frank Kimmel, the six-time champion, started this day dead last in 41st and now sits in 12th as we get ready to go back to green. What a ride up through the pack he has had here. Just a great run for Frank. He's right where he wants to be. He just eased his way through the field, kept out of the, all the, the confrontations in front of him. And again, it's so, so tough to do here at Daytona because this track will just reach out and bite you. It's like a kind of like a big bristle because if a guy gets in a, in a wreck in front of you, could be some quarter mile ahead, you're usually tied up in it. And it's just so tough. I talked to Bill Kimmel and Frank before the race, and I said, guys, what's your strategy? And Bill said, Dan, I'll just be happy to finish. Regardless of wherever we finish, I'll just be happy to finish, make some points, and go to the next one. Unfortunately, we're starting from the back here today, but, you know, that's just one of the things. He said, uh, just be there at the end, keep keep my head on my brother, and uh, we'll be there in victory lane, maybe. Yeah, and he knows we're talking about him. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. He's goofy enough anyway, but now he, he's really acting up for us. <laughs> All right, well, let's go down and hear what he has to say, Bob Dillner. Well, Rob, you got to check out where we are. First of all, check this out. This is where all the cars are stopped on the racetrack, heading into the first turn under these red flag conditions. And you can see all the cars behind me. And beyond those cars is where they are making those repairs to the fence area. Now, you talked about Gim Kimmel being a little bit goofy. He dropped the net just a short time ago and asked me, how the heck are you doing, Bob? Well, Frank, I want to know how the heck you are doing. Well, pretty good. I tell you, the Advanced Auto Parts Fort Taurus is, uh, you know, it's running better than we could have expected. We've made a lot of great passes uh, and doing a lot of it by ourselves. So it's going to get tougher when we get a little bit closer to the front here. But I can see Gerhardt. Maybe I can catch him. Uh, can you catch him? That is the key question. How strong is this race car? It's pretty strong. I tell you, I'm real, real pleased with it. Driving really good right on the uh, yellow line all the way around if I need to be. And, um, you know, still a lot of, lot of race left. So we just got to go out and bide our time. And uh, we're, we're getting up there with the faster cars now. So... Uh, we'll just see what we got, and uh, I got to say thanks to my big brother Bill. He went out and jumped over the wall and changed the front tires. I was pretty proud of him. I was, I was kind of worried Bobby's going to trip and fall and take the radiator out of the car, but he, he did a good job. Went on around there, and uh, I think we had about a 22-second stop, which is uh, pretty impressive. Hadn't done it for four or five years. Well, speaking <laughs> of the brother, he's with our Don Radabaugh. Indeed, he is, Bill Kim. I was going to do a great story on the average age of your over-the-wall crew, about 21 years old, but you went and blew that all the heck going over the wall changing the front tires what was that all about well we had a couple of guys down that was supposed to show up today and do that and one of them had a little accident last night wasn't able to make it so they had to, i had to go over and change tires i went over at 47 i come back at 65 so it, uh, it was pretty tough you 
though. But uh, the advanced auto parts sport cars run awfully good right now. Uh, I think we just won the fastest lap of the race about five laps ago. Uh, things are doing pretty good, you know. I want to talk briefly about this crew. They are not permitted to drink alcohol or smoke during race week. They also have a curfew. Yeah, it's easy to do it when you got young kids. They, they don't know what's right or wrong, so they do what you tell them. Uh, but for the most part, you know, we don't drink, we don't smoke. Uh, they're in their room every night by 10 o'clock. I, I know that sounds kind of funny, but, you know, when they come here, they're, they're more prepared, ready to do better, I think. I don't think it sounds funny at all. In fact, I think it sounds like this team, this team is a six-time series champion, so I think that all adds up. Nothing funny about that. And let me tell you a little story about Frank Kimmel down here this week. As we said, he didn't get a chance to uh, get his qualifying attempt in, so he was forced to take a provisional. When he found out he was going to have to do that, he asked the ARC officials if it would make a difference as to which provisional he took. He had the option of getting the first provisional. Had he taken that one, Joe Cooksey wasn't going to get a chance to make this race today. Frank said, you know what? I'll take the champion's provisional. I know that means I start last, but I want Joe Cooksey in today's race. I want everybody to have a chance to make it if they can. That just shows you where Frank Kimmel is as, as a man and as a racer. Well, that, that whole race team... Uh with our team of uh, Schrader Racing, we get to run with them about four or five times a year. And we always look forward to going running with them because uh, you always get to race them hard. They're going to be real tough to run against, but uh, they're just fun. They'll help you. They'll work with you anyway. Uh, they want to beat you on the racetrack, not uh, beat you some other way. Kyle, you've had a chance to come up through the different development ranks up all the way down to the Stealth Cup Series. What do you think of the ARCA Series as a, a training ground for some of these young guys? Oh, it's a tremendous opportunity, obviously, for myself and like Blake Feast, Kyle Kristelhoff. You know, we have the opportunity with Hendrick Motorsports and able to, to make a big name for ourselves when we're in great equipment, of course, as Schrader's alluded, uh, alluded on earlier. But uh, it's still fun to be able to come out here. It's a great learning tool for us. It's a great series to be able to get our exposure in as well as get used to these big 30, 400-pound stock cars and at facilities such as Daytona, two and a half miles, or even the short tracks of South Boston or, you know, places like that where it's only a half mile or Toledo. Kyle, let me ask you, coming to Daytona and, and winning the race here last year, it's had to give you confidence to be here today and, and to be out there in your Nextel Cup car and go around. D don't you feel that way, and don't you feel that's been a great, great advantage to your effort? Yeah, it really is. I mean, being able to come out here last year, I came out to Daytona when I was about eight years old, and, you know, I was excited just to come here and see this place. But, uh, you know, you go down to turns one and two, and you look back towards three and four, and you can hardly see it. It's so far away. But um, just to come to Daytona International Speedway and have the opportunity that I have, of course, I'm, I'm very appreciative of, of course, from Mr. Hendrick and all the other people that have put me into place, Kellogg's company, and, of course, uh, Delphi and CarQuest as well. But I have a, a great time being able to run up here and um, being able to race and, uh, it's always what you want to do, and to be able to be here now and doing what you love to do is always fun. Repairs continue to the fencing here in the Tri-Oval at Daytona due to the Claire Zimmerman incident along the outside fencing here. While those repairs continue, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back to Daytona. The, the cars are circulating here at Daytona, the advanced Discount Auto Parts 200 getting set to go back to green. Kyle, we were talking about the incident with Claire Zimmerman during the break, and you think you have a pretty good idea as to... Oh, well, we got to take a quick second here. I'm going to make a trip down the road. A little bit early stop for Matt. Um, we're 31 laps into the race. We really talked to crew chiefs, and they said that window's 35 on, but maybe he's just making an early stop, get to the back, and work his way back to the front. Kind of a strategy that some of the other teams may not look at, and it may pay off for him towards the end of this race. May, Matt having a great run here today at Daytona. Okay, Kyle, let's take a look at that again now. Uh, you think you saw something about maybe what happened to Claire Zimmerman? Yeah, if you watch here on the he gets real close to that outside car right there, and then, you know, he just kind of gets free there. What happens is he got into the trioval, and as you get into the trioval when you're on the inside of somebody, it looks like it was Norm Benning, um, you get a little tight, and you try to keep it off the car, but as it washes up closer to that car, you're putting more wheel into it to stay off that guy, and then all of a sudden your car just breaks free when that outside car starts moving on you again. And then you, the car, the air just basically pulls you around, got them sideways, and then obviously going through the trial of a backwards, very dangerous and not a good situation. Got the car up off the ground a little bit. And 
just a bad situation, but um, hopefully none more of that happens today. That video also showed a, a great piece of safety working, and that's the fact that that car backed into the wall at such a high rate of speed, but the fuel net, you could actually see, stayed together, mm -hmm. which is wonderful, avoiding an even uh, bigger situation. Here we see Chad McCombie leading the field there as Matt Hagens came in, took fuel, start from the back. Uh, great day for Chad. There's Johnny Leonard in the Boca Bay Builders car. Uh, great run for Johnny today. He stayed out of trouble, and uh, hopefully he'll have a good finish here today. T.J. Bell, reigning rookie of the year. Here's Frank Kimmel, listed in 10. Great run for Frank, right where he wants to be. Well on his way now, if he can stay right there, even to uh, a seventh title. Ken Weaver. Kent Weaver bounced back and forth today. He's in seventh place. A great run for Ken. Um, he's excited about finishing here today at Daytona also. Mike Garrity doing exactly what his crew chief, uh, Eddie Sharp, wants him to do. Ride along right now. You're sitting in six. You got a great race car hanging in there. I'll get you to the front when I need you to go there. But right now, he just needs to run laps. Yes, he does. Needs to fall in line, sixth place up in that top ten. If them guys could fall single file, um, he'll have a good finish here today. Bob Dillner, what can you tell us about the 64 car and their strategy now? Well, the 64 made a stop, and he's hoping to get back through the field to help out his teammate, his protege there, Joey Miller. Joey told me they don't plan to pit the rest of the way, nor does the pole sitter for this event, Bobby Gerhardt. Bobby Gerhardt thinks he's got a good enough car and enough fuel to go the rest of the way, and he hopes to be numero uno at the end of this race. Hagen's back out onto the track after leading this at one point. Well, we had 31 laps completed and 32 cars still on the lead lap as we uh, got back to green, or getting set to go back to green. Unfortunately, Larry Foyt running great here today at Daytona. Uh, Kyle, you've been here before. You've gotten a lap down and you've won races. Um, it can be done. You just have to be patient. What's the key? Uh, mainly the key is here to try to stay out of trouble, obviously, but starting up on the inside as we see the 16 cars coming up there on the inside of the leader there. Um, you just basically got to hope that you can get out in front of them and, you know, basically stay there on the tail end of the lead lap, hope for a caution. If you can get a little quick caution there, then you can come back around and get to the tail end of the lead lap, try over again, coming through the field. So we'll see what happens. You can believe Larry Foyt's spotter's talking to him. He wants him. His spotter's telling him, try and get in front of that 11 car, if at all possible, on the start. Don't jump the restart. It's so important not to jump the restart yep. here at Daytona. If you do, then you'll go another lap down. Exactly. Don't jump the restart. Make sure you're, you have your nose behind that 11 car just, just as a security point so you don't get uh, penalized again. But getting ready to come down to the green, I guess, huh? Getting ready to go back to green. The pace car is off. Chad McCombie pacing the field to the line. And after a very lengthy red flag period, we are back to green here at Daytona. Great, great start for Chad. He's so excited to be out there, but look at Larry Foyt on the inside. That was perfect. turn two and on board with Frank Kimmel now as he tries to work his way up through the field. Battle for the lead already beginning. And the nine car coming Joey up Miller. through. Joey Miller picking up the top spot. That 16 car, of course, that is the point machine at the tail end of the lead lap. 20-year-old Joey Miller, great run on the outside. He wants to lead. He wants to put Larry Foyt to the back. He's looking at the front. He's just so excited to be here at Daytona. He wants to win it at rate, but he has to get in line. He has to get the draft here today. Kyle, he got completely hung out as Gerhardt freight trained him through on the bottom. Yeah, he certainly did. It looked like he was trying to oh. make a move on the 16 car and pass him, but he wasn't quite able to do it in order to try to take that front spot and put 16 back a lap down, but uh, he still wasn't able to lead that lap as Gerhardt did. Little Mike. contact between him and Mike Gardy. Um, Again, he, he just wants to get back in line so bad, but he has to be careful. You see the donut on the side of that car? He has to get back in line, but he needs to be there at the end. Patiently aggressive. The contact continues between him and Garrity. 
Boy, you don't need to be doing that right now. No, you definitely don't. He just needs to be able to calm down there right now. He's got a great car behind him, as he should realize that Frank Kimmel's behind him. They're trying to side draft right here, suck air off each other. And as you get that close, sometimes that air channel, man, it just pushes you together. So you can't get too close, otherwise then the air's taking over and driving your car for you. That, that's the kind of thing that'll make a crew chief crazy. You know I got a good <laughs> car. I need my driver to get away from these other guys, settle down, get in line, and go racing for a while. Yeah, that's it. There's still 44 laps to go, so I mean, there's still plenty of time. They might even have another pit stop. It's so important to have a good spotter, guys, in this situation. He's telling them, guys with experience and spotters, hopefully they have some Nextel Cup spotters up there on the roof saying, guys, stop this dog fight. Get in line. You need to get in line because look in front, see what's happening. Them two, three or four cars up front are leaving. Todd Cleaver, who actually won the Roush Gong Show for an opportunity to get a full-time ride with Roush Racing, Bob Dillner, he's doing a great job in his one Arca race this year. He's sitting right in the thick of things in second. Yeah, and considering the fact that he has never, ever been to Daytona before to see a stock car race, that is impressive. He has been to Bike Week before because he's a former motorcycle racer. But I spoke to Todd Cleaver during that red flag period. He said, Bob, this is a lot of fun out here, but where is Frank Kimmel? The reason why he is so concerned with where Frank Kimmel is, they've cut a deal of sorts. They are both running. Running forwards. Of course, Todd Cleaver for the Roush organization and Frank Kimmel for his own. They plan on working together if they can get together, but right now, Frank Kimmel just a couple cars behind, but that is something to watch out for the rest of this race with 43 to go. You know, it's so hard to believe. I was talking to Frank Kimmel earlier in the week, and I said, Frank, you know, you've got these six championships. Daytona must be so important to you now. He goes, no. Championship number seven is more important to me right now because that will be the one thing that will make me so different than anybody else in the history of Arca. Right now, tied with six with the great Iggy Katona. So that's what Frank said. He said, however, when I get championship number seven, trust me, everything will be focused on Daytona. Pull out the stops. Exactly right, Ralph. Frank Kimmel looks at the big picture. He's here to win championships. He wants to win his seventh championship in the Arca Remax Series. He knows he has to finish races. If he finishes in tenth or first, it really... It's the big picture that really counts. He has to finish this race. Starting from the back today has been a tough task for him, but look, he's done great. He's up there in the top ten here today at Daytona. Never done it here at Daytona. Frank Kimmel, arguably one of, if not the greatest ARCA drivers, has never won at Daytona. Maybe today. He's right in the middle of it. There's that bright red number 46 charging through the trioval, sitting solidly in fourth place right now with a huge pack behind him. And we got trouble in one and two. Cars flying everywhere as debris scattering across the racetrack. Wow, tough break. What, again, here at Daytona, we run tight. We all get together. Somebody gets a little loose. Everybody gets gathered. I was just about ready to say we had a, it was such an awesome sight. We had 24 cars in the lead draft right there, and they were all doing an awesome job just coming up through there, making some laps, getting to the end. But trouble any time can reach about and get you. Now, there's Johnny Leonard, one Sorry. of our onboard cameras. Gosselin was involved in that. I saw the 12 car in the middle of that. Tough. Is tough. that the 38? The 38 uh, caught up in the mix there as well. Harmon's machine, Mike Harmon up in the middle. Damage to the right side on the rear quarter of that car. There we see the 90 car of David Reagan. Wind net down appears to be all right, but boy, that race car's used up. David, the son of Ken Reagan, who's turned many laps around this racetrack when he was racing in NASCAR's premier division. See David climbing out with Hans device on. He said, just get me out of this race car. Not where he wanted to finish here tonight at Daytona. We see Johnny Leonard He's unbuckling. Looks like he's going to be okay. It looked like we could see a couple of cars just starting to break the tails out as they went down into one, Kyle. Now you can't really see what happens from this view. It's too far ahead, but uh, obviously stuff happens in a hurry and you get caught right up in the middle of it. You can see Johnny Leonard. Tough break for all these guys. Just nowhere to go. Exactly. Another late hit. Again, when you get sideways here at Daytona at 180 mile an hour, it's just hanging on. You just hope nobody hits you too hard. Here we go down in the corner. Looks like the 08 got a little help from Ed Kennedy in a double zero car and turned it on from there. The guys have nowhere to go. It's TJ wow. Bell in that 08. 
See Mark Gibson caught up in that, not where Mark wanted to go. Mark running for the championship. 67 car of Chad Blunt. Yep, Ed just gets back in the back of T.J. Bell, and that's where it all started. David Reagan had a hard hit. He sure did. That was wow. in the lining. He took a fish and almost head on impact into the outer wall. Certainly did. And then a couple more shots as he slid back down the banking. Yeah, it's glad to see everybody's driving away or at least right getting out. out. See the 08 car of Reagan, 08 car T.J. Bell oh. started it all. Wow. That hurts just watching it driving these race cars. You definitely hate to see that stuff kind of happen to you. Reagan got turned, and that car just went straight up the banking, and then he got clobbered one more time as he came back. All right, real time, just listen. As you guys mentioned, Mark Gibson involved in that incident. Dennis Pulte is his crew chief, first of all. Is he okay? And what did he say on the radio as far as what happened? I could not hear Mark. Our spotter could hear him. Mark said he was okay. I guess think he did drive it in. I heard him say, do I turn in here? Uh, we got hit from behind, turned around, and where's the pinball after that, it looks like. We all knew the big one was about to happen. It always happens in one of the races here at Daytona. Bob, you're exactly right. Mark Gibson, again, a longtime veteran in the ARCA Remax series, running DEI Motors. His brother, Tony Gibson, the car chief on Michael Waltrip's car. Family been around racing an awful long time. Bo Gibson from the Daytona Beach area here today, working with them all week, working on that car. Just a great family, and I'm sure Mark will come back and be in the points running for the championship here at the end. As you can see, the pits are open, and the uh, service is beginning on these different machines. T.J. Bell trying to get his 08 back out. TJ didn't appear to get hurt. Um, he got booted from the back a little bit, got a little loose, but possibly no damage to the 08 car TJ Bell. Yeah, just a little bit to the back, it might have looked like they were working over there. So I think he was one of them. We're just in front of the wreck. Yeah. So he got he definitely caught a break there and got out of it. Bob, what can you tell us about T.J. Bell's car? Well, T.J. Bell's booty lager car does have some damage on the left rear quarter panel, and that's what the Defiant Clothing team is trying to work on, but they don't want to lose a lap as well, so they take off, and they may bring that 08 car back down pit road because that left rear quarter, as you can see it, was kind of flying loose a little bit. T.J. not only won the Rookie of the Year award this past season, but he also finished third in the points. It was a very good year for this young driver out of Sparks, Nevada. Looking off the back of the 08 of T.J. Bell. By the way, the 16 car of Foyt has gotten his lap back. Very good. See, now he's in the same situation yeah. as the 87 car was last year. Yeah, you know all of it. <laughs> there you it's going to be good to see him hopefully coming back up through here, Larry Foyt, and trying to get his challenge back in in the front of this field. Guys, it feels that much better when something like that happens. You get your lap back, as you know, Kyle, and then you can finish in the top five. It just makes it that much better. I tell you what, Larry Foyt's probably a hundred times happier, probably a million times happier than the rest of those guys that got caught up in that terrible accident, though. It was a tough break for all those guys, but it turns out to be good for another guy sometimes. Don Frank Kimmel is up to fourth. And I... Frank Kimmel, Frank Kimmel has uh, mentioned on the radio that this is his best shot ever of winning Daytona. He said, this is it. This is the one we've got to do. He is the all-time super speedway winner with 2,364 laps led. He won over $3 million here in the ARCA Remax Series, more than any other driver. But as you know, he's never won here. His best finish was second. But this, he says, right now is his best opportunity to win this race here tonight. Well, he's, he's made it through a lot of obstacle guys here today. Again, starting from the back of the field, working his way up through the through the field. And, and ironically, I was talking to Bill Kimmel this morning. He said, Dan, can you help me with a tire changer? He said, we've lost one of our guys. He said, I don't know what to do. So we went in the cup garage, talked to a few people. Stan Hoover was supposed to come back and, and crew, the, crew the car, but ended up that uh, Bill had to do the tire changing himself. Obviously, he did a pretty do good it? job. You didn't <laughs> want to help him out? No, I get hurt doing that. <laughs> I'm too old. <laughs> Here's a look at the frustration Frank Kimmel has had here at Daytona. You can see not even a lot of laps left yeah. over the years. No, last year was his good year. 
It was a shame we denied him of that, but uh, if he says this year is going to be good for him, then we can't wait for next year, huh? We talked a little bit about the similarities between Frank Kimmel and the late Dale Earnhardt when it came to racing here at Daytona. So many championships in your respective division, but not a win at Daytona for so many years for senior. But really, one of the differences there is that Dale Sr. led a lot of laps in here, just not the right one for some 20 years. Yeah, that's right. He was the he was the band pretty much here. And now his son's kind of taking over that legacy. Yep. And, and I talked with Frank and he said, Dan, the super speedway program gets so, so expensive. He said, I'm more concentrated on the rest of the year. The short track program, the intermediate program, we only race super speedways twice. He said, why, why spend all our money on the super speedway effort? If I can get me a top 10, I'm happy, then I can win on the rest of the tracks. And that's a good philosophy. That's a valid point as well, too. It's worked for him. Yes, it has. It sure has worked for him. Well, you see the lights are on here at the speedway. And crowd. Uh, yep, here comes a 44 car down pit lane as well now. Uh, we see Tim Steele taking care of some pit work. Timmy having a good run today. Uh, not quite up front where he liked to be. Lindsay? Yeah, you guys, he is pretty happy for where he is today, but you see him, his pit crew working hard here. They brought the car in. They are, to our understanding, going to change all four tires. That's what we were told. Looks like they're working on the front left tire right now. They yep. jacked the car up on its side. Guys? They've got some issues on that nose, too, fellas, and they're, they're working on that. You can see a lot of tape being put up there uh, around the front air dam area, and you can see things coming out, a little heat coming out of the nose. Looks like maybe some radiator issues, Kyle. Yeah, I wonder where he got all that damage from. I didn't think he was in the middle of that melee that happened down in turns one and two, but I don't know. Maybe he caught some debris or something somewhere. Exactly. Sometimes you run over a little piece of tire and debris and, you know, at a high speed and it just dents the front end. Hopefully they can get that nose beat out. The, the smoke from that radiator is just that these cars, we run as minimal tape as possible, so uh, they overheat sometimes when we don't get out there and we get up to speed. As you see, he's got valence damage on the whole front of that race car. Uh, they really need to get that knocked out of there if possible, but it looks like it's possibly had a hole in it, some duct tape over it. So he'll have to live with that the rest of the afternoon. How's this as a possibility? Maybe he had to dive down through the infield grass area to get out of the incident. And when you go down there, as you know, Kyle, you get off the course, that grass looks as pretty as any golf course you've seen anywhere, but it's a lot bumpier than you think. It's definitely not smooth. We definitely know all about that. Uh, it's just a uh, bad deal. It's a bad deal for him there. Obviously, there was a there was a little bit of material hanging down below, and the six car's got a bunch of damage in the front of his, his car yeah, as well. Justin Asborn there, a great race car driver. Tough break for him. Possibly some damage from the bottom of the track when he comes off the apron uh, could have caused that, uh, but he's back underway. All right, well, let's take this opportunity then, while we're still circulating under the yellow, to take care of some business so we can show you more green flag racing when they are ready to go. Here's the great Iggy Katona. Well, just behind the guy with the hot dog. There he is, <laughs> Iggy Katona. <laughs> just below the great Neil Bond. Period. Earlier today, in one of the earlier segments of this race, we had a very disturbing incident on pit road where Blake Fees' car slid through its pit box and into an opening on pit road. Now, we are about to show you the video of that once again, and I must tell you, it is a rather disturbing piece of video. So you might want to look away if you're not comfortable with this. I will tell you this, however, that everybody who is involved is okay. We will give you an update after we take a look at the video. Right through the pit box comes Fees's car. Now, I can tell you that five folks were injured in that incident. Four of them were photographers. One of them was a crew member for Blake Fees's car. Four of the five have been treated and released from the infield care center here at the Speedway. One of the photographers was transported to a local hospital. He is conscious and alert, so we are happy to report that it appears that everybody will come out of this okay. It's definitely great news for all involved. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Fortunately, them accidents happen here at the raceway, and I'm sure NASCAR and all the tracks have, have done a tremendous amount of work to make these racetracks safer and safer through the years. We talked about Iggy Katona just as we were going to break. We saw his picture on the uh, Wall of Fame uh, at the entrance here at the Speedway down. Actually, in, it's in the infield. And Iggy Katona with 79 wow, that's great. career victories. And look at Frank, Frank Kimmel. Kimmel right there. 56. But Jack Bowser, we <laughs> talked about how the Bowser family, one of those big names in this series, 54. 
Wow, and you know, three of Iggy Katona's wins were right here at Daytona International Speedway also. So uh, out of 79 wins, only three of them really were here. So Frank Kimmel, uh, maybe the numbers are there. All-time super speedway wins right now. That belongs to Tim Steele competing in today's race. Frank Kimmel right there with 15. See Jeff Purvis, Jimmy Horton, Grant Atcox, great, great racers. I think the super speedway term, we should say that's what, mile and a half or two mile and above? Because Frank's be, never uh, won a restrictor plate race. Should be listed as a mile and a half, I would believe. Mile and a half or above racetracks, be right. Charlotte, Atlanta, type of fast, fast racetrack. Getting ready to go back to green here. Getting everything organized and situated. All right, let's take you back through the top 10 a little bit here. The five car is Bobby Gerhardt. That's our race leader. The 60 tar of Todd Cleaver. Dan, that is the driver that came out of the Roush Gong Show. <laughs> we say Gong Show, everybody says, what do you mean the Gong Show? Well, what Roush does is they have a develop developmental program for their drivers, and they took 400 applicants, race car drivers, young, young guns, basically, and narrowed it down to 100. Then they took that 100 and narrowed it down to 26. Um, they took that 26 to North Wilkesboro Speedway, which is a past NASCAR racetrack, and they, they had three three days there that they spent, and they did eight drivers a day, I guess, and they, they ran the drivers, and out of them, they then took 10 of them drivers to Darlington Raceway. Out of the 10, they picked the one. Well, guess who the one was? That would have been Todd Cleaver. He's got a truck ride out of it and an ARCA race for the Roush folks. There's Mike Garrity sitting in third, that new race team behind him. Boy, he is excited about it. He's been giggling all week long about how good this car was. He said, this is the first time I've had a crew chief that tells me the car is going to do this. I drive it down into the corner, and it does exactly that. Eddie Sharp won this championship with Bill Baird a few years ago, and uh, he's going to try to do the same thing with Mike Garrity before this season is over. Frank Kimmel sits there in fourth. Wow. Getting that 46. Man, it's impressive, isn't it, Kyle? Definitely is. Frank's always a great here, though, as well, too. He came, I don't remember where he started last year. I believe it was fourth, maybe fifth, and uh, he ran up front the whole race and was pretty much there all the time. We were able to take the lead from him there in the late running and went on to victory. But um, Frank, he's always been good here. Just hasn't quite been able to get to that victory. Maybe we'll see it today. Great racer, Frank is. Excuse me, Ralph. Great racer he is. I've raced with him a lot. If you get on the inside of Frank, Nine times out of ten, he's not going to chop you off unless it's the last lap. He's just a super racer, uses his head, knows what it takes to get the advanced auto parts car in victory lane, and if he has to do with second that day, he'll do it because he looks at the big picture. He looks at championships. The number two comes out of the stables of Joe Gibbs Racing. J.J. Yaley behind the wheel of that Chevrolet, sitting right now in fifth, and J.J. Uh, doing exactly what he needs to do here, getting more laps in a big stock car here at Daytona. And Behind him comes Joey Miller in the number nine. Bob, you can tell us more uh, about Frank Kimmel? Frank Kimmel and Todd Cleaver. I am actually in Cleaver's pit right now, and they are all smiles down here. And you know why? I mentioned before that they wanted to work with their Ford compadre, Frank Kimmel. So now Cleaver is second, Kimmel is fourth. They plan on getting together and drafting to the front and then trying to keep the rest of the folks, including some of that Hendrick Brigade with Bobby Gerhardt and Kyle Krisloff behind them. So look at Cleaver's number 16. So important to have somebody to help you, Ralph, on a super speedway like this because you need that help. You have to have draft and help. And the, the, the contact there is the Roush Motors and the Fords with Frank Kimmel and Todd uh, together, working together. That's what it's all about. There's Kimmel back there in that red 46. Now, Frank actually loaned this chassis to Daryl Basham one year at Talladega back in about 1999. New Daryl needed a new car to go racing Super Speedway, let him use it, and says it's a pretty good car. So he's got it with him here today as we go back to green. Steam to build up, but boy, by the time they get to the end of the back straightaway, 
Look at this, down this long 3,400 foot stretch of pavement comes this pack of Arca cars. Dude, if you get a run on a guy like you see, you got it, you got it. Six, eight cards by the time you enter turn three. So if you got a good run when you come off of turn two, it's important to dive down, but you do need a dancing partner. Here's that old war horse chassis of Frank Kimmel's. He knew his longtime friend Daryl Basham needed a good car for the Super Speedway. Daryl had showed up in the short track chassis to run Talladega. He said, that's just crazy. Take this piece over here and run it. Give it back to me when you're done. Give it back to me when it was done. Yeah, and you know did. what? They had talked about splitting the purse when it was all said and done. He just took 500 bucks. That was it. Great racer. Frank knows what it's like to, you know, start with nothing and not have a lot of money. Frank and Bill have always worked on their own stuff. It's a family effort, and uh, it's really paid off for them. See Frank looking down to the bottom side. He had a good run. Going down in the corner, he looks under Mike Gertie and takes the position. There you go. You got the 60 and the 46 together. Now we'll see if they can get anything done in order to knock Bobby Gerhard back. Yep. They, they can, it's easy to catch a guy sometime, but it's a little bit harder to get around him. So we'll see if they got the oomph to get around that five-car Bobby Gerhard. He's got a lot of motor in that race car. Got 30 laps to go to get it done, so they still have plenty of time. I haven't heard if anybody still has to come down pit road and pit yet. I think everybody's good to go on fuel, but not quite sure. Don't know. Uh, 30 to go. It may be tight. Some of them guys come in a little bit earlier, so we'll just have to wait and see how it falls out. It looks like Chris Garrity's uh, caught to the inside here now with Krisloff on the outside. And which way is Venturini and that 25 going to go as they battle for six? Billy's looking for the fast line. That's where he's going to go. He needs to be on the faster line, but the problem is when you get next to a car, you see how they buck air like that. You need to separate. Then he can move forward. Don, what can you tell us about Frank Kimmel's number 46? Well, you guys were talking about going the distance. I just talked to crew chief and brother Bill Kimmel. They said they are definitely good to go the distance. This whole crew is standing up. They're watching TV on the back of the haulers. They are pumped and ready to go to victory lane and good to go the distance on fuel. Look at this battle once again. Oh, trouble. We got one smoking big time. The three car smoking really bad. The Mitchell machine down with the right front tire. Oh, Mark looks like Mitchell's car has got big issues. It is lit up. Had an oil leak on the front of that race car, and then the right front tire down looks like. And uh, when you get oil and uh, sparks together, they ignite. It's probably brake fluid on the right front of that car. You see he's okay. He lets the wind and net down. Just got to be careful not to quite crawl out of that car right yet. Well, you can see all the fluid behind it on the racetrack, which, of course, would make me believe there's probably a pretty good strip of it. Might have a, uh, another lengthy caution to have to clean that up. Got to be careful. Got to get them cars slowed down. Speed. Uh, see the pace car picks the field up. You can't say enough for these safety crews. They work so hard. Put their lives on the line to protect this race car drivers. And uh, I'm thankful for all of them. Gosh darn it. <laughs> That's knowing that that good run just uh, went up in the smoke, didn't it? Yeah, tough break. Especially when you know there was so many other cars that were already knocked out of the race. You were looking at a pretty good run if you could just keep it going. Mark out of Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, there's Tim Steele. Tim Steele's night apparently coming to an end. Not a good sign. Lindsay? I'm with him, yeah. I got him. Go. All right, Tim, sorry, we're here. We're here with uh, Tim Steele. Tim, a disappointing evening. What happened out there? Um, I don't know. There was something up in front of me where there was a wreck in one and two, and I got in the back of the car a little bit, and it just, uh, motors, motors going south, and it's... How frustrating earlier. Yeah, we had a good car. It's, um, earlier in the race, everybody that said they were going to dance with me hung out to dry. And um, it's just some reason it don't get along too good with me. I've, I've um, always struggled here in the past, and I thought maybe we were going to break that spell, but it is what it is. Kyle, uh, you experienced that guy's tongue? Yeah, yeah, I'll work with you. I'll work with you. As soon as they get out there... Uh, <laughs> They blow right by you and leave that's, you alone. that's definitely a tough story to try to believe from somebody. I mean, it, 
you even yourself, you know, you tell somebody that you're going to work with them, and you're working with them, you're trying to follow them or whatnot, and just you know put yourself in that situation. You're following somebody going through there, and then all of a sudden they break off and do a move, but you're like, well, that's not quite the right move that you should be taking. So you take another, and then basically they blame you for hanging them out. So you're just kind of like, well, I'm up here, and you just went back there, so I guess you made the wrong move. But <laughs> you, you, sometimes you got to do what you got last year. And his car was so fast that I'd be following him up through there. He'd make his moves, and I'd he'd make about five moves, and I could follow him for about three of them. And then I'd, I'd drop off from him. I couldn't follow him anymore, so I kind of felt like he'd dump me off, but I just couldn't keep up with him. Yeah, like, you know, like Kyle, you know, he's not going to hit the brake pedal and slow down for you, and you really wouldn't yeah. expect him to, so it's just so hard. A gorgeous sunset over the world wow. center of racing as Bobby Gerhardt continues to lead. Here in the home of the Yarka Remax Series, Speed Gym. Going to be fun, huh, Partis? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Coming with me? Wish I could be there. You're not going to? In, in a car. Oh, well, I was going to say. <laughs> I'll be there. Wow. I was going to have to do it by myself. Bob Dillner's not going to have to do this interview by himself because he's got a pretty good guest. Yeah, a very prestigious guest down here in the Yarka Pits talking about Jack Roush, Nextel Cup car owner, and of course you won a couple of cup championships recently. But how about this new kid, Todd Cleaver, running second out here in this Arca race? Well, Todd Cleaver, you know, is really a quick study. Uh, to understand where he came from, we had a competition last year to pick a, uh, a replacement for John Wood in our Craftsman truck. And uh, Todd was one of 400 applicants with resumes that had won races and won championships and done things significant. So he was the winner out of already the winner out of 400 uh, entrant uh, competition to get in that race. I asked him. I said, Todd, can you win the race when we're, we were during that red flag period? And he goes, I think so. I'm getting some good coaching, and you're up there, you John Munson, and everybody coaching him along. Looks like he can win this race, Jack. He can do really good. You know, John Munson's doing a great job. Uh, Mike Beam is up there helping too. Mike, Mike's going to be, uh, you know, with uh, Ricky Craven in the Truck Series next year. So we're all grooming him, uh, watching him, but we're just amazed at what he can do. You know, the, this is my first time of being on pit road here with the Arca cars as an owner. It's really a different role for me, but it's very familiar, familiar surroundings. You know, the car that uh, the Todd is in is is uh, is Carl Edwards's Bush Grand Ash, or Bush uh, Carl Edwards uh, Talladega car from the Next Hell Cup series last fall of course the engine is mark martin's spare so it uh, we really didn't put together the optimum uh, arc of, uh, program for uh, for todd but he's doing a great job with it thanks a lot jack we appreciate it and just one more note on todd cleaver nascar's taking a good look at todd cleaver because he had never been on a restrictor plate super speedway before and they asked him hey Jack, Todd, can you run this race so that we can approve you, approve you for the Craftsman Truck Series next week? And I guess what, guys? I think he's going to get that approval, don't you? <laughs> he's passing, I think, yeah. It's hard to believe we found a racing series Jack Crouch had never fielded a car in before. Really? Yeah. Everything from the NHRA Pro Stock Competition to the <laughs> next Hill Cup Series and now the ARCA Division. Yeah, it's pretty cool. to th See, that's another reason for the ARCA Series. I mean, it's a it's a great series to run in. It's a good series to get your exposure in and things like that, to get experience. And exactly what Todd's doing is he's trying to get the experience level built up here to where NASCAR can approve him for his status in the Craftsman Truck Series. Another reason why I ran this race last year was to get my approval for the NASCAR Bush Series event that I was supposed to run a week later. So uh, uh, definitely a great place to, to get your, obviously, your name out there and obviously prove yourself. Looks like it worked out fairly well for you. Yeah, exactly that. <laughs> Uh, you know, I'm sure Todd will be able to do a great job as well for, for Jack in, in this race as well as the Craftsman Truck Series this year. So good luck to all those guys. Billy Venturini in that 25 car has got a shot at this one, Lindsay. He's in eight. Yeah, he feel like he does, but without we have to talk about the number nine car, too, when we talk about him. That's the nine car of Joey Miller because Venturini's crew has said that, you know, they're having a decent run, but they're worrying about that one car because they said he's getting erratic. And I talked to Troy Selberg, who said that the plan now is to find a way to hook up with seven of Kyle Krisilov and draft around the nine. Getting a little score. Poorly, huh? Strategies, imagine also. that. Strategies working out. Yep. There's another one right there. Uh, uh, we'll see if we can get together. If we can, we'll go to the front. So uh, we got the 60 and the 46 trying to get together. We got the 7 and the 25 trying to get together. So uh, we'll see what exactly happens here as the late get as the late laps get down. Billy got a lot of experience. 122 starts and 52 top 10s. So he knows what it takes to get around here. Uh, he's running an X. 
uh, Hendrick's car, ex Terry Labonte car. Um, he said it's been a great car and he's excited about it. Tested it DIS here in the racing uh, uh, testing here for the Arca series. So he said the car was good and it looks like it's proven that towards the end of this race. Yeah, they had to get to a new car obviously because the old Pontiac I think uh, was about ready for its leave of the Arca racing series. So uh, look forward to hopefully him having a good finish here and getting his new Chevrolet up front. Yep, that'd be great. Fellas, this uh, race has been shortened to 65 laps. So wow. we are coming to, this will be what, lap 57 coming up? Yep. yep. So uh, less than 10 to go. Nine laps to go. It's gonna get exciting. Here we go, Bobby Gerhardt as your leader. Green flag, back in. Kimmel right where he wants to be behind the 60 car of Todd Cleaver like they talked earlier and see if they can get a run on uh, Bobby Gearhart who's been so strong here all day to get by him for the lead. Frank Kimmel has never won at Daytona. The six-time champion sits in third in his red number 46. Arguably his best ever shot at winning at the famed Super Speedway. Will it be tonight? He's going to have to get by a very green rookie in Todd Cleaver and then one of the best Ooh. veterans in the series next to Kimmel, Bobby Gearhart, sitting at the point. Look at this battle back here between Miller in the nine and Chris Lopp in the seven. Garrity sits in four. And look at, we've got Venturini in the 25 right behind him. What a pack that is, battling back in fifth. All stops pulled out here, guys. It's nine to go. It's time to just keep her to the floor and do what you got to do. These kids are getting excited. The spotters are talking to them, trying to calm them down, saying, guys, get in line, get you a dancing partner. Now's the time to make a friend to get back up to the front of the field. Nine cars in a row ready to go. And the 16 of point. Wow. Watt is way back through the field. He was one lap down. Kyle Busch, you know all about that. We know all about that, but I'm looking at the vet here that we had going on about the seven working with the 25 here. They kind of, Billy had a shot to go at the seven, and the seven's been hanging tough on the outside of the four there for the last lap, but they just keep falling back, and they're losing sight of the leaders there. They're getting single file and kind of pulling away. The seven car of Kyle Krislov has got to get in line. He has to find another dancing partner. He's hung out on the outside there. He's buffing air, and when you get in there buffing like he's doing right now, it just slows both race cars down. They've got to get off each other. One of them other cars have got the hook up. Not a good scene. Nobody wants to tuck in behind the other guy exactly. and until Foyt or Venturini can catch up and push them, nobody's going anywhere, which is the worst thing that they could do. That's are not. Exactly right. You got Larry Foyt hung on the outside there behind Kyle Krislov. He's got to get up and give Kyle a bump, but Larry now knows that he has to get on the bottom because he's not going anywhere with Kyle. And because of that, Ken Weaver and a handful of others have now caught this pack, and it's a seven-car fight deeper in the field, but it's going to keep them out of a shot at a win. Now, we'll just keep showing you guys this battle because the the front pack is gone. The front pack is gone is right. And these guys have got to get together. They can work together. They can reel that front pack in. And then we'd have a whale to finish. Oh, Mike Garrity's just trapped on the bottom there. Mike has nowhere to go. Mike has nothing. There's just nothing Mike can do. He's, we're wide open all the way around this racetrack. You never lift on the throttle. The only time you ever get on the brake pedal is when you're about to run in the back of somebody, and you can't do that. You see Frank Kimmel look to the bottom side, and he wants Todd Cleaver to go to the front. He's going to work that mirror of Todd Cleaver is exactly what he's going to do. He knows he's got a young rookie up there, and he's going to do everything he can to make him nervous. But pretty soon, Kyle Busch, he's going to have to get around Cleaver if yeah. he needs Needs another lap or two to wear down Bobby Gearhart. That's exactly it. That was a that was a good spiel right there because <laughs> I mean it's down to business. You got four laps to go. You got to get by. So he's not even thinking about taking Cleaver to the front. I bet you he's thinking about taking himself to the front trying to get that win. We have got to stay green here, guys. If it goes yellow now, the race is over. Arca has just told us if it goes yellow flag, this race will be over. These guys are racing hard. They are going to race to the finish. But Kimmel can't do anything about that car right in front of him of Cleaver unless. J.J. Yaley can get up there and shove him past, which he's trying to do right now. There he needs. That's the run he's been looking for. You need a shove on the bottom side. Bobby Gearhart's hung out by himself, and he needs some help from behind to get on by him. That's okay. the worst thing that Bobby Gearhart could see in his rearview mirror is the 46 clearing Cleaver because he knows now that there's nobody behind him more hungry for a win at Daytona than his arch rival and good buddy Frank Kimmel. Remember, Frank Kimmel started this race 
dead last in 41st. He sits in second, never having won at Daytona. He's now three laps shot. Frank is right where he wants to be. He needs some help. He has to He has to get something from the backside to help him get around Bobby Gearhart. Believe me, Bobby Gearhart's mirror is awful big. He's driving to the top, driving to the bottom, trying to break that draft. He looks like a snake going down the back straightaway here at Daytona. Bobby Gearhart knows what it takes to get to victory lane here at Daytona, Dan. Yes, he does. He's been here. He's won here twice. He's a super speedway. We call him the king right now of the super speedways. Bobby is unbeatable. He does what it takes to get it done. And look at J.J. Yealy in the two car. We haven't heard of him all day. He, wow, he just comes out of nowhere with that shaver horsepower. Bobby Gearhart's got a shaver motor. There's a lot of horsepower in that first, the first and third place car here at Day Day Tone. There's two laps to go. We got Frank here in second. Bobby Gearhart's leading this deal. Cleaver got shuffled back. It looks like he's all the way back to sixth. So, um, tough break for him getting shuffled back there, but that's what happens when you get Frank Kimmel. Oh, oh Kimmel. Joey Miller ball. slides. Joey Miller slides, and we heard smoke coming out of the two-car of Gailey. So we're racing to the checkered flag. Oh, oh we got Todd Craver on the road. Down. Oh, the we got cars everywhere. everywhere. 20 cars. Coming to the checkered flag yellow. Who's going to get here? Oh. oh, we've got Cleaver flipping down the back straightaway. He lands on all four wheels. More trouble on the back straightaway. Oh, the 49 car, Dan Shaver, gulfed in flames. Coming to back. the line, Gerhardt's going to get here first. Kimmel right behind him, then it's Yaley and Garrity. That's the top four. The officials in the flag stand telling them to slow down immediately because there is a major, major situation on the back straightaway. Guys, we knew that was coming. It was two laps left, but we see Todd Cleaver out of the race car walking away. He appears to be okay under his own power. Todd Cleaver has crawled out of that wreck number 60. Tough, tough break. He's got a little limp. He's probably hurt his leg. Man, man. There's Gerhardt's number five. This race, we were told from the ARCA officials as we were winding it down, if it went yellow again, that would be the end of it. So it looks like Bobby Gerhardt, although we are not getting official word yet, should be declared the winner of this race. Now, he's making his way upon the accident scene now for the first time. Wow, when Bobby sees that, he's going to say, man, oh, man, I'm glad I was not involved in that altercation. He was where he wanted to be. He stayed up front all day here today at Daytona. Great performance for Bobby Gearhart as he passes through the wreck debris down the back straightaway here at Daytona. See cars everywhere, pieces of cars all over the racetrack. We have not gotten any reports yet on the condition of all the drivers, but we've seen Todd Cleaver, who did numerous somersaults and barrel rolls down the back straightaway, climb out of that Roush entered automobile, and he appears to be okay. Frank Kimmel, once again, looks like he's going to leave Daytona not having found a way to victory lane. However, what a tremendous effort by Frank and the entire 46 team to have started this race dead last after not having a shot at qualifying even choosing to go to the very last position so that Joe Cooksey could make the race, and now he's going to get credited with second place. I was going to say, watching those guys coming down to the line, Frank probably had the opportunity to pass Bobby Gerhardt to beat him back to the stripe, but they both just, you know, took it as though the race was done, you know, and they just kind of both slow, slowed down, obviously, to come to the caution flag and then uh, down but back straight away. Here will be the checkered flag now waving for Bobby Gerhardt as they will take the checkered flag and the yellow. Kimmel will take second, Gailey third. Mike Garrity, a fine effort for his first race with new crew chief that is short. They qualified seventh. They come home fourth. That is an exceptionally great. great day for them. They will be thrilled with that. Bobby Gerhardt, I'm sure, would like to have raced under the green flag against Frank Kimmel to the line to win this one, but he'll take it. Yes, he will. It would have taken a lot to get by Bobby Gerhardt. He would have needed Todd Cleaver to do that, very sure. But uh, what a great race. Unfortunately, a big wreck to finish this ARCA race here, but uh, just a great, great day here at Daytona. We see Bobby's crew just delayed. There's his brother, Billy Gearhart. Been with Bobby a long time. Great crew chief. Dan Shaver Motors, a lot of horsepower here. Again, he's had 8,500 miles on the road for testing here at Daytona. They have paid off. He said, Dan, I spent more money at Daytona testing, coming back and forth to Talladega. I've been to Talladega five times testing. 
he says it really, really takes it out of you. I sure hope that I can win this race here today, and he's done a great job here tonight. The Advanced Discount Auto Parts 200 will go to Bobby Gerhardt here tonight. See Bobby, the official's taking the net down, talking to him, giving Bobby a little direction to victory lane. Bobby has got to be tickled. His third win here today at Daytona in the ARCA Series. Great, great competitor. Well, gentlemen, it's been a long afternoon here into the evening with the ARCA Remax Series. We're going to have to step aside. Kyle, thank you for coming by. Dan, thank you. Lindsey, Bob, and Don downstairs. I'm Ralph Shaheen. NASCAR Live will keep you updated. Stay with us for more continuing coverage from here live from Daytona. Good night, everybody. On Speed presented by Netscape where you just saw an incredible finish to the ARCA race here at Daytona. Went on a little longer than we had planned, but nonetheless, it's a very happy time in Daytona's victory lane for Bobby Gearhart. Let's go to Bob Dillner. Bob? Bobby Gearhart, the first person to grace the brand new victory lane here at the Daytona International Speedway. with the three in the air. Three for three victories in the ARCA Remax Series here at Daytona. The Gatorade goes flying. We'll get Bobby down here. How about that, Mr. Gerhardt? The third victory in this ARCA race here at Daytona. I don't know what to say. First thing I want to say, Everybody that watched this here today at this beautiful racetrack and sat down and watched this race on speed all over the country, all over the world. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I hope you had a good seat. I certainly did. But I promise you there were two people that had a much better seat than all of us. My mom and dad together for the first time. I lost my dad last year. I promise you he's been with us all week. And I just had a feeling, Bob, I ain't said a word to nobody. I really had a feeling that we were coming here. And we're here. An emotional victory lane for the Gerhardt, your brother Billy here as well. Big hugs and kisses down here for Bobby Gerhardt. But Bobby, I have to ask you one more question. You've won now three times in this race. Frank Kimmel, the six-time champion, right on your tail. He's never won at Daytona. You knew he was hungry. He was real hungry. Uh... I promise you what it looked like. What I've learned here is you can't get too, out in too far out in front, Bob. And, and uh, this car was that good. On restarts, I checked out sometimes 10, 15 car lengths, and it was a dangerous deal. So I began to drag the brake. It looked like it was making it a race. And uh, if they think it was a race, good. It looked like they were going to gang up on you for a while, though. Coming back for number four with this girl right here. You won't see her again. Oh, wait a second. We talked about this. This car did not have a nickname before the win here. Now, does it have a nickname? Well, I lied. <laughs> oh, what's the nickname? <laughs> That's a Sweet Pea. It's actually, it's actually the car we ran last year. It's our, our best race car. I'd like to take a minute to thank all our sponsors, uh, Lucas Oil, all their great products. We're filled up with Lucas on every end right here. I promise you that. Their stabilizer, one hell of a product. Can I say that? I don't know. It's a four-letter word, but I'm not even going to get to go there. Bobby Gerhardt in victory lane here at Daytona for the third time in the ARCA Remax Series, but for the first time in the brand-new victory lane at Daytona. Wendy? A crazy ending to this ARCA race, and Frank Kimmel, I'm standing by with him. He comes home second. Frank, you seem pretty excited with the second-place finish. Well, if you can't get excited with those last ten laps, nobody, you're, you're about half dead. I'll tell you, what a, an exciting race it was. And, uh, Getting a kiss from his wife. Uh, Congratulations to Bobby. I hate him. I don't like any of them, but no, they, you know, they've done a great job with this restrictor plate. He's the best arc of restrictor plate racer there is, so to run second to him, I feel pretty privileged, but uh, man, what a great run for the Advanced Auto Parts guys, and the, the port crew worked their butt off all day long and uh, had to fight back from that long, that was a long start back there, so saw a lot of exciting things. Tell us how the wreck went on that final caution just now. What did you see from the driver's seat? I looked up I, I looked up in the mirror and I just saw some things happening. I saw the smoke and I saw a car get up in the air. I hope everything's okay back there. Uh, wow, what a big wreck and a lot of everybody was working so hard to, to get up there and I knew when they, I kept asking what time it was and uh, I guess the crew were getting, because I knew they were going to cut this race short. They have to to get the cup guys out. 
And uh, when they did, I said, it's going to, all hell's going to break loose, and that's exactly what happened. As our reigning champ, this is a great way to start your 2005 season. It really is. Uh, you know, I just had a, one of our fans from the Port team uh, yell up that uh, uh, two doesn't count, but uh, the seventh does, and that's what we're shooting for. So uh, got to keep working now. All right, Frank Kimmel gladly takes home the second place finish. Why don't you take us through this first? Tell us what happened to you. Well, I know the 9 and the 60 got together, and I was about through it, and right there you see me get right reared. And then I ended up when I kind of just slid backwards a little bit and kind of was about stopped right in this area, and uh, there's going to be one more coming to hit me, and that's where adult damage was done, right in about there. Ouch. <laughs> there you go. And that's the first time you've seen it, isn't it? That's the first time I've seen it. Good thing. Uh, race and we're looking forward to finding out uh, some good news uh, from race control.